Blount disease, also known as tibia vara, is a developmental disorder primarily affecting the posteromedial portion of the proximal tibial growth plate. It is closely associated with childhood obesity and manifests in two distinct forms based on the age of onset. Early onset, before four years of age, and late onset, after four years of age. This condition is characterized by physial abnormalities of the proximal tibia and compensatory changes in the intra-articular morphology of the medial compartment of the knee, often visible on MRI scans. Causes and pathogenesis. Obesity. The strong association between increased body weight and Blount disease is well documented. The increased compressive forces due to higher body mass index, BMI, contribute to growth inhibition around the knee. Studies have shown a significant correlation between BMI and the severity of varus malalignment in patients with early onset Blount disease. Children with higher BMIs tend to present more severe deformities and are more likely to require surgical intervention. Weight reduction in these patients may decrease the need for surgical correction. Metabolic abnormalities. Recent studies suggest a possible link between metabolic abnormalities and Blount disease. For instance, vitamin D deficiency has been associated with a higher likelihood of developing Blount disease. Additionally, children with early onset Blount disease have been found to have lower serum levels of zinc and higher levels of alkaline phosphatase compared to controls. Deformity analysis. Differentiating between physiologic genuvarum and early onset Blount disease can be challenging. The metaphysial diaphysial angle, MDA, of the tibia is a useful metric, although there is variability in measurement techniques. Radiologic findings indicate that while proximal tibial varus deformity is common in both early and late onset forms, late onset Blount disease often involves greater distal femoral varus. Intraarticular morphology. MRI studies have revealed significant changes in the intraarticular morphology of the knee in children with Blount disease. These include thickening of the medial meniscus and increased height and width of the medial meniscus, along with abnormal signal intensities in the medial femoral condyle and tibial epiphysis. These compensatory changes help maintain overall knee joint alignment despite the deformity. Perioperative considerations. Childhood obesity, often associated with Blount disease, can lead to complications such as obstructive sleep apnea. Preoperative screening for sleep apnea is recommended for children with Blount disease who exhibit snoring. Additionally, advanced bone age is common in these patients, which can affect surgical planning and outcomes. Preoperative assessment of skeletal age is crucial to determine the timing and extent of surgical interventions. Surgical treatment options hemiophysiodesis, and guided growth. Guided growth techniques, including the use of tension band plates, have gained popularity for correcting angular deformities in Blount disease. These techniques can be applied to younger children and have shown promising results. However, complications such as wound infections, screw breakage, and recurrence of deformity have been reported. Temporary and permanent growth modulation techniques are often used together making it challenging to analyze the outcomes of each method separately. Oste osteotomy, proximal tibial osteotomy, both acute and gradual correction, remains a cornerstone in the surgical management of Blount disease. This procedure aims to reestablish normal alignment and sagittal profile of the proximal tibia. Postoperative follow-up is essential to monitor for recurrence and ensure optimal clinical outcomes. Conclusion. Blount disease is a complex developmental disorder with significant implications for affected children, particularly those with obesity. Early diagnosis, careful monitoring, and appropriate surgical interventions are crucial for managing this condition. Frequent follow-up until skeletal maturity is recommended to optimize clinical outcomes and address any recurrence of deformity.